Okay, YouTube blade lovers. This old sword is back again with, yes, another two sun review. And today we have the TS255, 255. It is a design by Bill Nottie Designs, a.k.a. Bill Nottingham. And uh, you can uh, see a good deal of Bill's posts and offerings out on Tucson Knife Fans. It's a Facebook group. Uh, it's a, one of which I'm a member. And it was where I was first introduced to Tucson Knives a couple years ago almost. So I did not measure this one up. And it has been suggested to me that um, maybe I do my own measurements and then just kind of recite them later. Well, didn't do that, so we're going to take some quick measurements on this just so you've got an overall idea of its size. So I'm measuring the overall length at 8 and 3 eighths. The blade at three and five eighths, cutting edge at three and a half. That was quick, right? And in millimeters, the blade thickness, 3.7. Handle thickness, 0.55 inches. And the weight. I got this magnet that defines everything. And the weight comes in at four point seven five ounces, under five ounces. Okay. We're done with all the technical details and it didn't take long at all, right? And uh, well, just knock the camera. One of my viewers mentioned that the uh, manufacturer's specs are not always correct and I've found that to be true. They're sometimes off. So always, bet to get, always best to get the actual measurements. So this is an interesting knife. Um, I like it overall. It's a solid, beefy knife for its size, which is not a small size. Let's take a closer look. We've got some beautiful carbon fiber. We have an unusually shaped handle. We'll get into more of that later. We've got a nice logo for uh, Bill Nottie Designs. It is a 14C28N blade steel, a Sandvik blade steel. And the show side is devoid of any markings at all, which is a nice thing to see. It's a harpoon style drop point. We have this little raised portion of the blade here. Basically it's a drop point. Nice plunge grind there down into a really a sharpening choil. Um, you can make a little use of that, but you don't want to get overconfident because you've got a nice point where the blade terminates right there that's going to get you if you push your finger in there very hard. So maybe you can get the tip of your finger in there. I'd say, you know, it's more style points. There's a lot about this knife that is about the visual impact. Not to say it isn't a usable EDC knife. And knowing Bill only through his posts and uh, some of his comments on the Facebook group, um, you know, he, he likes a good usable EDC knife. But at the same time, we all like, quote unquote, pretty knives, right? So I would say this is a little bit of both. I want to point out a couple of things here. So we've got a relief on this side of the handle so that you have 
better access to the lock bar on the frame lock. We have a hardened steel insert, which is pretty much what you see on all frame lock knives and two suns. We have a clip which uh, nicely thought out will flip to the left side. However, we've got you know kind of a deep detent there that you may or may not like. And you've got a spare screw for that clip as well. So it's sort of the screw sort of a hole blocker if you will. Uh, the clip is not particularly deep carry, leaves about a half inch out of the pocket, but really not too bad. It's a uh, simple but stylish clip, kind of a stonewashed, bead blasted kind of a look, soft look. It's got a built-in ball underneath. Um, I find these are nice for smooth in and out of the pocket. It's got a pretty good amount of tension on it. Now if you look right here, in order to have this relief for the locking bar, they scalloped that out. They lowered the side of the uh, frame a little bit. Somehow or other it doesn't smoothly run up into this area here. You've got this kind of odd looking little hump. Um, not so sure personally I'm that thrilled with that. Um, we've got a rounded kind of a hump here and then you've got this place where this hump kind of joins into the the valley there and I can see maybe the need for having that not be too sharp but they just kind of flattened it right there. Now a lot of this I don't know if it's the way it was uh, handled in the final stages of assembly and smoothed off or not, but uh, what started out as kind of a nice thought to have these waves in the handle gets um, style-wise, you know, kind of interrupted. That sort of stands out at me. Uh, maybe it doesn't bother other people. It doesn't really bother me, but it's something I thought I'd point out. Then we get into the ergos, which are very interesting. Um, as with a lot of finger groove knives, the hump falls directly on the middle finger, and you can't really squeeze two fingers. You sort of can squeeze two fingers up in there, I suppose, but you still hit that hump. I suppose if you had significantly smaller hands, you might fit two fingers in there. Where it seems to be at its best is in kind of a cross palm saber grip with the pommel kind of still into your palm. That's where I don't find that that hump is really getting in the way too much. Um, so. I don't know what the thought was. Like I say, it's an interesting looking knife every time I put it down and say, you know, I like other stuff better. It, it kind of pops out at me. It, it's got a nice appeal. It's got a nice visual uh, impact. Um, but the Ergos, um, there are other two sun knives where it just kind of melts into the hand. We've got jimping on the blade which is sort of encapsulated into the frame. Uh, it's roughly even with the frame on the blade. So you get some effect of the jimping. You can feel it. But the edges of the frame, the handle out here, are slippery, smooth. So I think they take away some of the effectiveness of that jimping. Still, it's useful jimping. What else have we got going on? Um, a nice lanyard pin rather than a lanyard hole, which I think is nice. Again, the um, provision made here, the milling for the clip, is uh, takes a little bit away from the handle of the knife.
I like the knife in the pictures, which is why I ordered it up. By the way, this came through my White Mountain Knives. And don't forget, you can get your 10% there using Old Sword as your discount code. It's www.whitemountainknives.com. And the guy you're dealing with is Justin. Very, very uh, good uh, salesperson who will take good care of you, by the way. Have any questions, you just write them at whitemountainknives.com. And I believe it's service or sales at whitemountainknives.com. It's on the webpage. But uh, always gets back to you right away, and uh, they'll take good care of you. Getting back to the knife, uh, the 255, TS-255 by uh, Bill Nadi Designs. Um, I like it. Uh, there's a few little points there that I feel could be improved. Uh, try not to be too critical. It's by no means a bad knife. It's no means, by no means am I saying don't get it. Because what I found with a lot of knives is there are knives out there that people rave over that I don't like and the other way around. Um, so there's a few little niggles that I mentioned there, uh, mainly having to do with the handle contour, I would say. Um, you know, a lot of knives these days are being designed on CAD or being designed on even uh, drawing programs on your phone. And they're doing a fantastic job. I know Jelly Jerry designs his knives on a, an app he uses on his phone, so he says. Um, I find that those knives uh, from Jelly turn out pretty good with regards to ergos. Very few knives are perfect. Depends upon how you fit them and they fit you. That's all I'm going to say. So again, I like the overall look, weight, and feel, and balance of this knife. Uh, it's gorgeous looking. Um, Let's take a look at it in comparison to the Freak. Pretty much same size knife, slightly longer handle on the Freak. Against the uh, Ontario Rat 1, we are seeing that the knife is, uh, let's see, well, overall the Rat 1 is about a half inch longer. Pivot to pivot, um, pretty close to the same blade, let's see. If I don't use the pivot, if I use the end of the handle, you know, awfully close. And then what have we got left? Well. The usual here, the Griptilian. Flip them around, bring them in close. You know, Griptilian is a little shorter overall, with a little shorter blade mainly. Handle pretty comparable. And we want to make sure I didn't miss anything. There is no weight relieving on the inside. I mentioned in my video on the TS223, the Monarch, that Sandvik Steel, no fault of the designer, has issues with uh, scratches. You're only going to see them in a hard light. Notice in a broad light, softer light, you're most likely not going to see them. But they're there. There's a pretty good patch of them over on this side. Now, there's been a lot of speculation about why. Some people are saying that the steel is soft on the Tucson Sandvik. But that's in contrast to cutting tests by Outpost 76, wherein it almost performs as well as M390 in some cases. 
and even better upon second and third sharpenings. So if that's the case, cutting tests rely on the hardness of the steel. If the steel is soft and is a low rock well, you are not going to have a durable edge. So how can you have a durable edge that where the surface scratches? I don't know. I'm not a metallurgist, but uh, those are just some observations. I have found the edges on my Samvik uh, knives of all different manufacturers to be outstanding. Very, very good. And have, I would say, a medium to very good edge holding capability. So this might be something that's getting picked up in a certain area of the Tucson factory where the Samvik steel blades are being handled. I'm not sure, but I don't see the same scratches on their S90V, on their M390, their D2, or any of those steels. All right, so uh, I'm still in a quandary. If you've got more information, feel free. And uh, I thank my viewers and their support and the positive comments. And we hope to be back soon. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. This old sword, signing out.